Okay, um, hello, my name is Catherine. I'm here to do a little talk today. I'll just tell you a little bit about myself first of all. Um, in 2004, I qualified with a <coughs> degree in psychology and I'm a member of the British Psychological Society. Fast forward a few years, I had a little boy and I thought, oh, I want to be a nurse. So I qualified last year with a degree in adult nursing and I now work for East Lanch Trust within the Stroke Services. I'm also an active volunteer for the Stroke Association. So today I'm going to talk to you for about 10 minutes on stroke and if you have any questions if you can save them to the last and hopefully I will have covered them anyway. So today what we're going to do, stroke can also be known as brain attack and one person has a brain attack every five minutes. So by the time I finish my 10 minute talk, two people will have had a stroke. What I want to go through today is, um, I'm going to give you a very brief, basic description of what stroke is. We're going to look at the damage that stroke can do, um, not only physically but psychologically as well. And I'm going to teach you a little test that you can take away um, should you come across anybody who's having a stroke. Okay, so a stroke or a brain, brain attack is a disruption of blood supply to an area of the brain. Now this can be caused by either a blood clot or a bleed. And depending on which area of the brain this happens in, depends upon the damage that's left. Okay, now one third of people recover from a stroke and they have no lasting effects. Another third of people are left with a lifelong disability. And unfortunately, the final third die as a result of the stroke. Okay? But it's not just black and white. Um, it affects people differently, different types of people are affected differently. So can I have a volunteer? Yeah? Have a sit down. Okay, so what's your name? It's Ross. Ross, are you married? Yeah, no, I'm not. Not yet, so you're going to get married? Yeah, in August. Oh, lovely, right. Okay, so let's pretend August has been and you've got married. Okay, so what's your wife called? Jodie. Jodie, you're going to have children with Jodie. Yeah, so <laughs> fast forward a few years, you've had two kids. Right. Okay, one. <laughs> Do you like going on holiday? Like cooking and eating out, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to damage his brain. So, this one in the head of the camera, but I'm not going to do that, obviously. Right. Okay, let's pretend you've got a big blood clot in your brain, okay, and we'll put the blood clot, we'll put it round about here, okay. So this has now left you not able to speak and all the right side of your body is paralysed. Okay, so you, can, you can't even smile. Pardon? I can't speak. Oh yeah. Yeah? Okay. So now Ross has come along to my very busy hospital ward where we deal with stroke people. And I'm a very busy nurse. And I want you to tell me that, okay? So I'm busy doing my busy nurse stuff, doing my pet. Are you okay, Ross? Hello? Hello? Pardon? Are you in pain? No? Have you got an itch? No? Your leg? Is your leg sore? No? I, I think you're being a bit rude there. I'm a professional. I went to uni for three years not to come across things like this. Okay. What I'll do, I'll put your buzzer here so you can reach it and I'm going to carry on doing my busy paperwork and then I'll come and see you later, but okay. Now, that is exaggerated, but I have seen similar happen in a hospital. What you were trying to tell me was that you needed the toilet. Okay, so something as simple as that can't be communicated once you've had a stroke. 
Now let's fast forward six months. Goes back home to his wife and his two children. And I'm working for the Stroke Association. And I receive a letter. And the letter says, Dear Catherine, since Ross had his stroke six months ago, our lives have been turned upside down. He can no longer work, and I've had to give up work to become his full time carer. Holidays are a distant memory, and we can't go out for a meal because he dribbles when he eats his food. I can barely afford to pay the bills each month, and the mortgage is becoming a struggle. The children wonder why Daddy doesn't take them to the park anymore. The children wonder why Daddy doesn't smile when we draw the picture. But worst of all, they wonder why Daddy no longer carries him on to bed and cannot say, I love you. Our marriage was once happy and we could share a joke. Now it's just empty. Please help me. Go sincerely, Ross's wife. So that just gives you an example of how devastating a stroke can be. And it doesn't just affect the individual, it has a ripple effect. So, this is why we need good nurses, good doctors, good physios, good psychologists, good speech and language therapists, good dietitians, and charities like the Stroke Association. Now, I want to give you, you can all that. This is the test that you do if you think somebody is having a stroke. So first of all is the letter F. And you're looking for any signs of facial weakness. So you ask the person to smile. And what you will notice often is that half of the face is paralysed and they can't smile. Their eye might be drooping. The second test is you ask the person to raise both of their arms up in the air. Can you raise your arms up in the air? Can only raise one. They're paralysed on one side. You ask the person to say a simple sentence, so could you say six sizzling sausages? No. They might slur the words or they might get the words out of context. Finally, T, it's time to call 999. If you see these symptoms, it's a medical emergency, same as a brain attack, a stroke, or a heart, um, a heart attack, or a stroke is a medical emergency. You must dial 999. If these symptoms are being caused by a blood clot in the brain, and you can get that person to A&E in less than four hours from the onset of the symptoms, we can give them a drug that dissolves the blood clot. So the lasting effect of the stroke won't be as detrimental. Okay. But it's not all doom and gloom, don't worry. Okay. You can come and join us at the Stroke Association and have some fun. People who I deal with there, they say that the lives have been enhanced since the stroke. Although it's changed totally, the quality of life is a lot better through the services that we've come across. So, thank you. I've put together a little clip of what I get up to on a weekly basis when I'm not working at the hospital. It works. And it's not working. Is it that link there that you're trying to? No, it's, it should come on automatically, but well, it doesn't matter. I put the link on just in case that doesn't happen. I've got it on the internet. Thank you. So, this is something that I've put together, and I'm not technical minded at all, so it took me about
Okay. Any questions? Is there a straw on the sword fish and then the towel? Yeah. Um, but because it's a charity, we rely on volunteers. So currently in East Lanks, there's a coordinator in East Lanks who gets paid the salary for doing what she does. Um, but we have about three volunteers, I'm one of those. So you get paid expenses if you're a volunteer. But yeah, they try to have them in every time. Is there a way to I've had one minute in the van stroke and they're quite able to refer on to the... How it should work is you, in, in, this, in the East Lanks, you have a stroke, you land at Amy, you get a CT scan that decides whether it's a clot or a bleed and that decides on your treatment. You get put in the acute stroke unit until you're medically stable and then you get sent to rehab if you're going to benefit from rehab. At rehab, that's where you get picked up from the Stroke Association. So if you've got a good nursing team there, who know what's available, they will refer you. But the Stroke Association come in once a week mm. and just go around all the patients and speak to the relatives about the services they provide. Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry, Dean Stephen, do you mm. in um, exercise groups? We do communication groups where we'll, we'll put a quiz together each week and we'll just have a bit of fun. Um, I think the worst and the most enjoyable one for me is I, I can't sing what I love singing and it's something I've always had a problem with. Now, the lady who works for the Stroke Association picked up on this she's very clever. So what she does now once a week is we have a singing group with a room full of people who can't actually speak so I end up having to sing <laughs> to a room full of people and it, it's good fun, it's good fun, yeah, so we do all sorts, we've got an allotment of raw vegetables, we do all sorts. Yeah. Yeah. The letter that you did, was that birth, what, what was that letter based on? Um, just from my experience how it affects people, obviously each person's lives are different, but a stroke can happen at any age. But the older you get, the higher the risk. Yeah. Um, just the main thing is how it affects people. Okay. Is it more men than women? Um, <clears throat> it seems to be more men than women, and in my experience, it seems to be worse for men. Now I don't know the effects. I mean, I don't know whether it's because it's so. Disabilitating. Oh, well, because they've always been the vet, wouldn't they? Yeah. They're and they Yeah, um, I'm not being sexist with really, it, but women tend to get on with things, don't they? Yeah. Whereas a man, it's a big shock. Well, no, that's all it is, like, they can't work. So they can't work, they can't, they can't even take it. themselves to the toilet. Yes. And it, it, yeah. it really is sad to say, yeah. It changes people's emotions as well, because my uncle has had a stroke and he's changed as an individual. Yeah, it can affect personality, emotions, people can just start crying like that, I'll yeah. in the red off. Um, and to an outsider who doesn't understand that, they think they're drunk or they, you know, they're, they're not right. But they can, really can't help it. The brain is such a com complex thing, it, and wherever it affects it, it can 